Morning, uh, Kildown Foley Soccer School. Another Zoom meeting today with another special guest, um, Vaughan Coveney. Welcome, Vaughan. Thanks for giving giving up your time and uh, giving us the opportunity to have a chat with you about football, your football, obviously your football career a little bit, but more importantly, football in youth development. Um, just an overview, Vaughan had a pretty illustrious career from 1990 to 2011. Um, played in the old NSL which is equivalent to our A-League, some 322 caps, a bit, a bit of research, one correctly if I'm wrong, about 113 goals there. Um, also played with the new, uh, Newcastle Jets, Jets and Wealth in Phoenix, had 48 caps there and scored six goals. Um, represented New Zealand um, over a 14-year uh, career, 1992 to 2006, 64 caps there and 28 goals. But more importantly, moved on after his football career and started his coaching. Um, did a stint with South Melbourne in 2010 and 2011, then moved on into the A-League, was a Melbourne Victory Youth Assistant Coach, who I met back then, back in 2011, 2011 to 2014, and currently is the Western United uh, Head Coach for the Under-21s. So welcome, Vaughan. Thanks for giving yeah. us your time. And um, Thank you. My really pleasure. looking forward to this Zoom meeting. Okay. Um, so... Just want to, as I said, just got, gave you a little bit of an introduction about yourself. Um, just want to touch on um, what got you into football to start off with as a young lad and it obviously took you to up to the highest level and got the most out of you. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, I was obviously originally born in New Zealand. Um, didn't really come from a football culture, if you wanted to call that. It was all rugby over there. Um, but my parents, you know... Uh, just started at a young age, just, uh, you know, loving the ball and ended up, uh, you know, going every weekend just to a local club. Um, yeah, and just enjoyed the game. You know, my parents didn't, you know, my par my father didn't really come. He played, but not at a very good level um, and not a high level. And, uh, but I just enjoyed the game and, um, uh, yeah, just sort of, you know, progressed from there. Um, they had, you know, they, they took me, they didn't really... No, they didn't really pressure me into anything. Just uh, I played tennis in the summer, um, you know, played soccer in the winter. And, um, you know, just progressed from there. Just used to love the, you know, love, love the game. Just fell in love with the game. So that was, that's how I sort of progressed. Um, what I would say is in my time, which I can see now, you know, I'm talking many years ago, um, I didn't have the opportunities that some of the kids have today. And I was never coached. Um, you know, I coached myself. I, I basically coached myself. I, um, you know, came from within and I just had the, that, that desire that I, I, I wanted to be better and better myself. So, um, you know, if in saying that, if I had all the, if you want to call it, all the tools that we have these days and, and, and the one-on-ones and the technical um, training and, and, and all that sort of thing, you know, I, I, I believe I probably could have been a better player. Um, so, you know, um, you know, the kids these days and the players they have so so much um, you know so so much so much work they can work with in terms of uh, oh you know all, all the different uh, coaches they can go to um, and get a lot of knowledge off them as well so I think it's a you know it, it, it's it's getting so much better yeah it's, a, it's an interesting point I was just gonna up on that going back to Doing, doing things for yourself, designing drills, I guess, for yourself, working on deficiencies. And obviously, George and I have done a lot of interviews with uh, past students that have played either at the NSL level or Victorian Premier League level. Some have gone beyond that as well. Um, when you when you analyse your own game as a young kid, I'm not talking about detailed data analysis. I'm just talking about, you know, you finish a game or a training session, you think to yourself, I could have done that better. I want to get better at that. How did, how did, do you remember how the mindset was for yourself when you when you went into your own personal private sessions as in you and the ball and how you how you went through that process in your headspace because as you're saying that the resources are plentiful at the moment but maybe the ability to stick to one for a longer period of time has become uh, almost old-fashioned and it's just look for the latest thing and think that there's a short answer to the to the question so what are your thoughts yeah. on that yeah, I think, look, there's no short shortcuts anywhere. I mean, you know, in my time, I didn't have, we didn't have video analysis or anything like that. You know, we we done all our work on the pitch. So we were just constantly, 
you know, racking out the hours um, on the ground, you know, and look, I was a striker. So um, for me, it was about finishing and um, just consistently hitting balls, striking balls, scoring goals, getting used to hitting the back of the net all the time um, and just having that repetition, repetition all the time. Um, you know, you can you can analyze, you can video as much as you like, and coaches can tell you as much as you like, and you can overthink it sometimes. But at the end of the day, um, you know, if it's position specific, then you, there's certain areas where you can, you know, you can you can just go out on a park and and um, you know you can hundred balls, two hundred balls. I think you know the the best players will tell you that it's, it, that's that's how they did it and that's how they learned their craft and sometimes you know we all have different um technical uh, you know in terms of shooting um the way how, how you take a shot how you finish the side foot with the laces power um you know so this yeah look for me like i said to you I'm, we're, we're talking many years ago but you know i taught myself and um you know like i got to a decent level um but you know, these days I'm 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 pretty sure that you know players with all the tools that they have, you know, can go away, um, you know, and and can speak to the coaches like ourselves, and and try to improve um, in certain areas. And uh, you know, it's not a, it's it's not hard to just get a ball and go out, but it's that willingness and that desire and the motivation to wanna to wanna get out there and do it. You know, um, we're not all going to reach it that high level we're all going to reach a certain level and you, you find your own level but you know what's to say that if you want to be a professional I suppose in any sport it's what what you put in is what you're going to get out of this game so you know you can make all the excuses in the world but unless you really put your mind to it and uh you know um that's 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 you know from my experience that's that's what I did I just put my head down you know and I keep working yeah, and look, you know, eventually, eventually, uh, opportunities will 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 come up, but then then it's up to you to take that opportunity. Just touching on that, um, Lorne, um, you know, making that transition from obviously playing it in the junior junior level, coming through and playing at a very high senior level, and now obviously being involved in a professional environment as a coach. What what? Do you find the biggest challenges for those sort of boys that are at that 15 or boys and girls that are at that 15 or 16 year old mark and want to take that next step from what we call junior football into the senior football environment from your own experience yeah. as both a player and a coach? Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, look, for, from, from my perspective as a coach, um, you know, identifying players is the first thing that we do. And, um, you know, we 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 look or we look at at a, at a, at a league level as as the the technical ability of the players, the best technical ability of the player, um, because the first touch is I think is is the most important, um, because that that is going to set you up for for anything, uh, you know, on the pitch, whether it's you know making good decisions or moving the first touch away from pressure. Um, you know the the first touch and the technical ability of a player. If you don't have that technical ability, unfortunately, you're not going to reach, you know, a high level um, because you're going to get yourself in trouble. Um, you're going to lose the ball, or you know. So that that's that's one thing. Um, you know, identifying players. That's that's one of the the and also probably looking at the behaviours and the characteristics of the player. Um, you know, their whole background really. Um, what sort of person they are, they respectful, you know, do they help out? Um, just the little details. Um, size doesn't matter, um, to be honest. Size doesn't matter. Um, but again, I'll get back to it. The, you know, the technical ability of the player um, is, is the first thing, you know, we look at as, as, as development coaches. That's, that's probably the best thing. Then, you know, the next thing is probably um, the culture. You know, the, the culture, again, talking about, um, you know, the professionalism, you know, the respect um, of players, um, those sort of things, um, you know, that, that sets up the whole environment, really. We've got then the environment where you have your staff, you have your coaches, you have your training, 
um, and all those sorts of things. So you know, it's 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 a pretty it's a pretty big big list of things. But you know, if the, if the players are you know um, you know mental, mentally mentally tough and, and and willing to do it, then um, you know the, those players probably are going to go go a long way. Thanks. Yeah, interesting. Um, in your your space at the moment at Western United, you've obviously got um, a group of players that are, you know, looking to make that progression into into senior football. Um, and am I right to say they're around the eighteen year old mark? Most of them. Do you work yeah, with? most of them? Maybe some of them are a little bit younger. Yeah. Do you find Do you find that um, the the gap between where they where they're sort of facing in terms of uh, the first first team is reachable from the youth system at the moment or would what you're seeing would you suggest like even I know in, in England and in other countries in, in Europe it's very common to send t- kids on loan um, to toughen them up into a second division or a third division club um, in Australia it's not so much the case we just kind of stockpile them in one area and then we just expect them or they maybe expect to jump straight into the first team without actually playing with men um, do you think that well, what are your thoughts on that, actually, before I go further with that question? Well, my first initial thoughts are every time you step up a level, the speed of the game and, and everything gets a lot, lot quicker. And I don't think whether it's a coach, you know, coaches or parents or even players don't understand if you don't sort of come from that environment that every time you step up, whether it's, say, you're stepping from under-18s to under-21s, to senior MPL to A League, every time, every time you step up, the level gets quicker and sharper, and um, so that's that's the hardest thing I think that young players can't uh, can't adjust or get ready to that you know from stepping up to the next level because the speed they have they either haven't been in an environment where that intensity is that high that they can't deal with it. And sometimes you might be able to deal with it for one session, but we're talking, we're training four times, you know, four times, five times a week in a game at that intensity. So then then you need to recover, you need to do the right thing, you need to eat the right food, you need to come back, and then you've got to go, you know, you've got to go again at that intensity. Um, so I, to answer your question, I, I think um, that, you know, our young players are, and not in an environment long enough, um, you know, throughout a season. If you're talking, you know, we're talking Australia now that, you know, we, we should be training like this for 10 and 11 months of the year um, and playing 50, 60 games at a very high level against the best, the very best against the very best. And that's the only way that, you know, we're going to get better as a, as a country, you know, and the players will get better. Then, then we'll, you know, qualify for more World Cups and, and we'll do certain things like that. But that that's from, you know, from my experience, from what I've seen is that every time they step up, you know, even this is just an example of, you know, where I'm at at the moment with Western United, with the 21s and the seniors. Every time, you know, we, sometimes we might, not all the time, but we might just play a little scratch match between each other, 11 v 11, you know, 10 minutes each way and 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 that sort of thing. But you can see the difference just in the level, um, you know, of the speed of the game. And even, okay, the physicality, yes, because there may be a year or two, but, you know, I'm, we're not really worried about the size. But the terms of the speed of the game, the, the thinking process, the decision-making just gets quicker and quicker and, you know, and, and quicker. So you have to be, you know, to get to the next level, that's that's what we, you know, that's what the coaches are looking for. They, um, unfortunately, yeah, that's that's the way it is at a very high level. Just on that, Vaughan, just touching on that um, that point there, do you find that you see a lot of kids that maybe come at the start of a, a particular season, for example, using the under twenty ones, and you look at them and you see they've got, you know, certain attributes they've got. They, they might have a great first touch. They might be. They might be a play. You know, he's a player that plays out wide. He's got the speed. He's he's got maybe the the now sort of vision on the park. But he does. He just lacks other things such as mental toughness. Just to grind through that that process of going through the system and trying to push himself even further to get to that you know that pinnacle of football where he can play senior football at a, at the highest level in this country. 
Yeah, I mean, you know, the thing is a player, we, we you know, look at a player who's sort of package it all up together. So you can have, you can have, you know, we, 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 I hear this all the time, you can have so much ability in all the world, but if you don't have the other things to go with it, um, you know, the mental toughness, punctuality, being on time, um, you know, looking after your body, keeping your, you know, your skin folds down, um, all those sorts of things, um, that you're not going to, you're not going to get to that level because, you know, everybody's fighting for, you know, a professional contract. Um, and, and you need to package everything together to be the best you possibly can. And that's, that starts from, you know, sleeping, eating, just everything. I'm talking about a professional athlete now, how, how you look after yourself, you know, um, uh, you know, being on time that, you know, just, just those little, the little details, um, and how you look after yourself, um, you know, um, just, just little things. And that, that's, you know, I don't sometimes, you know, with, with, a um, you know, um, coaches don't coach that or, or, you know, it's how you're brought up sometimes, you know, your family, your family morals and those sorts of things. Um, you know, we, we tend to always, I don't know, sometimes the, the better, the better kids that we see that, you know, that I've worked with and developed, um, you know, they're just, uh, humility. They're just, you know, really good human beings. And, you know, as, as like, from what, from my perspective as a, as a development coach, you know, at the end of the day, I try to turn, you know, we're trying to develop players, but at, you know, firstly, but also um, to develop, you know, better young men and women, you know, so you're a better person, a better player, you know, to come out of the system. If you come out of the system, you know, hopefully you go back. If you go back to your local club, you know, you're a better player, you're a better person. And I always say to my players, if I, if I work with you, you know, um, you know, and, and, and you, you leave me and you go somewhere else or whatever, you know, I hope that, you know, two or three years down the track, if I see you in the street across the road or something, you're going to come across the road and say hello, like we do now, you know, with, with yourself, you know, we always come and shake hands and say hello. You know, it's just a respect factor that I think that's part of this game, you know. So, um, you know, develop, developing the human being as well is, is a big part of also de developing the player. It's not, you know, it's not solely, you know, focused and tunnel vision on, on the player um, as such on the field, but it's it's the other it's the other things around that as well that you know is, is going to you you talk to the to the better players and 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 ask them you know um, or better coaches what 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 who they've worked with then they'll tell you about that player you know he was a good person he did the right things um, and that's why he reached that level you know um, it's some sometimes not all based on the technical ability. Um, it's 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 the whole the whole package. Great answer, great point. Yeah, I guess um, I, I wanted to touch on it. You've mentioned that a couple of times about um, looking after your body and, and maintenance of the body. And um, I guess in, in our current modern world, it's it's more of a sedentary lifestyle. People are sitting down, like we're sitting down. Us three are having this conversation, sitting down. Um, but generally speaking, there, there's so much more time where we're where we're in a resting state. And I remember uh, being a young player, uh, having an opportunity to train at South when you were there, um, when you guys had just come back from um, from the Brazil tournament, the, the massive Club World Championship. And yeah. seeing you, you were actually running the stretches for the boys out at Albert Park. And I was the first time I'd done a session where we had to do pre-activation in that sense. Um, and things, and I remember that this one sticks in my head because you were the first person to teach me what the piriformis muscle was. So um, stretching that particular part of your body. And I used to think to myself as a young player, having watched you many times in the NSL, oh, look how quick he is. Oh, I've got to do this stretch because maybe I can get quicker if I can get his sort of mobility in the hips. The things that you think about when you're 17. But even back then, you, you know, we talk about modern technology, the fact that kids can go onto YouTube, they can find yoga, Pilates, they can get bands, they can do so many other things. But even back then, things were being done, and you, you were one of the ones in, at the club that was you know, leading the way or, or leading by example, I guess, for the younger boys that were there. You find that if it's not led by yourself as a coach these days for the younger player or by the club itself, 
that it tends to sort of go by the wayside. So almost that they're waiting to be directed rather than actually directing it themselves and saying, this will make me better. I'm going to do this myself. Is that something you've noticed or seen? Yep. Yep. All the time. All the time. You know, we, we have all the resources. We have, we have everything. We give them everything. But so, you know, we say to them, okay, we give you everything, but in return, there's no excuses then. Um, you know, but what you, what we do see is um, again, those players that tend to, you know, reach the high level, um, are very proactive in what they do. They're, they're always there first. They're always out on the pitch first. They're the last to leave. Um, they'll pick up the phone. They'll, they'll call me. They'll ask for feedback. Uh, uh, all those sorts of things. That, that, those players that are always, um, their minds seem to be always switched on. They've got the football brain. You know, they they really, really entrenched in it. Um, which, yeah, okay, uh, it's fantastic when we're looking at it. But again, what you know, again, as we know, um, as coaches, that it's that very small percentage that will will reach the high level and be professional footballers. You know, so we've got to also maintain. Again, um, as always, important to me is education. So making sure that you know you do the right thing at school, you get grades um, because you know you need something to fall back on. It's always it's great having a dream and and um, you know wanting to strive to be the best you know there's nothing wrong with that but you've also got to educate yourself um, because I know we've seen it um, you know 10 20 percent you know of, of my players will own will, will probably get there you know um, so it's 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 not a it's not a it's not a big ratio so again the education part is is a big uh, is a big side of it so so also then you know um, these, these players also then um, you know, go out of their way to do, you know, extra study. They will, um, they will stay behind in class and, and do extra study. And, and you know, we don't, we're not getting phone calls from the teacher or anything like that about, you know, they're way behind. So you just, just like I t said before, it's, it's about packaging the player up and you can then see what that individual is about, you know, um, just from, you know, when he goes home, when he comes to school, when he goes to training, how how he how he um, how he really you know delivers himself you know and and puts himself out there or her as well you know so um, yeah look it's it, it, it's a, it's an important part. Is it fair to say on that Vaughan, you just touched on that that those you find those players that can that have got really good time management skills in terms of everything in terms of the education. Their study, uh, they're studying, their their um, training, whatever, are the ones that sort of not excel, but sort of the ones that may get there. Because what we find with a lot of students, they come in within our program at Year Seven and Eight, and they're you know they're really enthusiastic. The work, the school work loads not as much. They get to their middle years and it starts pulling up. They're, they're still there. We still got you know we got still got them on side. But when they get into those senior years, they start feeling the pressure. You know. They 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 want to they want to they want a part time job so that they want to get a bit of money they want to still be involved in you know training and trying to make it as far as they can with their football they've got their studies and some of them, some of them get it right some of them don't and mm. it, it comes down to we find that it comes down to this time management and the ability to manage your time because we find that um, the education side and the football side sort of marries each other they need one needs the other. So to yeah. get to where they want to get to, is that true? Yeah, yeah what you yeah, a lot of your good point. I mean, you know, I work, you know, I've worked for youngsters from young as you know, 13, 14, you know, when they go to high school. Um, yeah, again, uh, you make a good point. You know, they're very enthusiastic at a young age, but then again, managing your time, you know, training, school, etc., is is very important. Now, when you get to the teenage years, I mean, I have a teenage son, so I know I know what it's about. Um, you know, there's other things that come into your life as well. You know, there's lots of lots of other things coming into your life at that time. You're going through puberty. There's lots of things happening. You know, um, lot. You know, girls, uh, cars, and and all those sorts of things that you know the distractions and the parties and all those sort of things that start to to to, to get into your head. Um, but at the same time, you know, um, 
these these players or you know these these boys and girls want to be professional athletes or you know want to strive to you know be in the A League or have a have a have a crack at the at the big time. Um, it's very hard, I think. You know, I'm you know finding as you know as a teenage you know as a father is you know managing the expectations and then also letting letting boy and the girl be you know a teenager as well at the same time you've got to have a good balance in your life you know you can't solely be you know like i said to you right from the start my mother and father never sort of never pressured me into doing anything like they just said you go with it and you know i just i just went on my own path on my own journey you know whereas here you tend to see you know the parents really you know putting their foot down or, or whatever and then i think that you know, after a while, the kids go, well, you know, this is not really for me. I don't, I don't want to really, you know, the, the pressure, the pressure builds. And, and after a while, enough's enough. You know, uh, you know, you, you, they walk away from the game, which is, is, is probably the, the most disappointing thing, you know. So that's why I think, you know, to my point, you've got to have a good balance in your life. Enjoy the training, work hard, have a good work ethic. Um, Go to school, do the right thing. Also, be with your mates, you know, and and also have fun and be a teenager. Um, and then, you know, uh, good things come to good people, and I, that's what I believe. If if you if you're a good person, um, you know, um, I think you know you're going to get opportunities in life, whether it's being a professional sportsman or even working, you know, at, and getting a good job or being you know, very successful in life, then, um, you know, I think that's, a, that's sometimes we get distracted, you know, as coaches or, or whatever, you know, we think, oh, we have to make this player or, you know, you have to, we have to, you know, we're trying to turn, you know, 10 of these players into professional players. Well, it's not, it's not just, it's not about that all the time. It's about, you know, just making the person a better person and, and and hopefully taking those life skills and into into your life into you know wherever you end up like i said to you we, in 10 years time i'm gonna see you again and i'm gonna you know come and shake your hand again i'll say i work with you you know respect you those sorts of things so i just uh yeah i i feel sometimes we um you know really probably focus too much on really uh, the the pre pressuring the, the kids into being players or being professionals whereas if we I think took a step back maybe and just eased off a, a, you know a touch you know as parents and as as coaches because we, you want you want to enjoy the game you want to have when you're playing you want to have fun you want to you want to enjoy the game and have fun and you know play with your mates that's I think that's what the game is about you know now if you reach the high level or you then you you start because that's what I, I tend to see is if the kids are enjoying the game, they're loving the sport, you know, they like the coach, they like the environment, they start to excel probably on their own accord without even you knowing. They probably don't even know themselves. Oh, you know, yeah. These kids will just take off. You go, how does that kid, where did that kid come from? There's six months ago or 12 months ago, he was, mate, he was average. But now all of a sudden he's um, excelling. Um, you know, and, and, and it's probably because of the environment and the culture and, you know, because he loves the game, and she loves the game. Um, these, these players all, all of a sudden, they just, boom, you, you know, you, you'll see it in your own environment, at your own school. You probably see kids that just come out of the blue from nowhere, you know, and think, wow, how did that happen? You know, and um, so, yeah, there's some, there's some good stories, but, um, yeah, some, some good experiences as well. It's great. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to maybe to sort of wind us down and, and bring us to a, a conclusion in, in your space, because I believe you're still working as a, as a technical director at Essendon Royals. Is that? Yeah. Yeah. So you, you're getting to see kids right at that early stages of their, of their development when they're going through the skill acquisition phase and slowly building themselves up into uh, 11 v 11 football and then obviously growing puberty and all that sort of stuff. And then you're getting that, last phase of it as well at Western United where you're getting sort of the, the end of the, the pyramid sort of coming towards the top and the ones that are left in that phase, in that mm -hmm. space, sorry. Um, what advice would you give to the kids that are in that younger space trying to get to that 
final stage of their youth career um, in regards to something that maybe we haven't covered in the conversation so far, but something that, that maybe they, that they can take away. Because, again, when you work across different age groups as a coach, as you'll know, you get to, you're looking for different things in players and you're trying to get, like you said, the package will come together towards the end. But if things are done in a logical sequence, and I guess this is information for parents too, what would you say would be a good way to, to build that into them so that when they get to 18, they're at their most competitive level if they choose to take the game um, by the scruff of the neck, as the saying goes, and really give it a proper go? Yeah. Yeah, look... Uh... You know, it's it's a good question. I mean, you know, I, I see I see it from like you said, I see it from a very young age. Um, first of all, enjoy the game, L- love the game, enjoy it. Go and play with your mates. Um, secondly, um, again, I'll touch on it again: the technical ability, working on your touch. Um, you know, and and individual individual training uh, is great. Uh, don't get me wrong, these one-on-ones and two-on-ones and all that sort of thing, that, that's great for technique. Um, that, that's all very good. Um, again, um, so that, that's part, part, of, part of learning. But also then I would say um, the team environment, again, I think I touched on that before about, you know, being in a team where you're training three or four times a week, you're, playing, you're training at a high-intensity uh, you um, are playing games regularly, getting good minutes, um, you know, and, and being challenged every week. Now, not, this is not, I'm talking youth development. I'm not saying that you need to be winning games every week. It's, you know, you need to learn how to lose as well, you know, how to handle disappointment. Those, that's part of, you know, being, being a professional athlete. Uh, um, so those sorts of things. Um, yeah, so that, that's, that's part of the journey um what else would i say yeah the the other part is obviously looking after your body um if you're a professional athlete how how well you look after your body you know are you you know are you getting the right amount of sleep are you staying up late um you know uh are you eating well are you eating the right foods there's so many things that you you know you, you can speak about um, along the journey, but these are these are some these are probably the most important factors, you know. And then the other thing is is obviously you know listening to your coaches, um, you know, and be respectful. Um, and 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 you know, like I said, at the end of the day, for me, it, it, it was uh, you know it, it it comes from the individual. It sometimes it comes from the individual. How much do you how much do you want it? How much do you really want it? You say you want it, but it's easy to say that, you know. Well, what are you? Why are you sitting here then, when you're saying you really want it? What What should you be doing? I say, it, you know, I say it to my own son, you know. Um, you know so I, I can tell him, but you know, it, it's like you, you know, he can say all these certain things to certain players, but whether they they're willing and they have the desire to want to do it. You know, um, then it's up to them. It's, it really comes. You, we can, like I said, we can give them all the information and all the tools and and all those sorts of things and the tactical nous and all those sorts of things. But at the end of the day, I always say it to my players: uh, when you cross that line, like you know, um, it's up to you. Then it's up. To, it, it's up to you. We give you all the knowledge and the and the understanding, but then it's up to the player to be able to perform. You know, at that at their level. Now, sometimes that's just a um, you know, skill acquisition level, or it's uh, you know at a, at a at a very high level. So you, you give them everything, and then then it's up to that player, um, you know, to really be able to perform. And sometimes you have to perform under pressure, and that's that's not easy either. Um, you know, performing it, and if you have to do it every week as well. That's you know, so um, yeah, it's it it, it is a journey. It is it, it is a it is a, a big journey throughout throughout the years, um, but you know, like I said, uh, I think these days what we have in this country and what we give our players is phenomenal. Like what what we give them, the education we give them um, is probably some of the best. Probably I think probably in the world. You know, I've, I've been to Europe. I've seen what they do there. They're, what we do here 
sometimes is better when they, what they do over there, you know, with our kids. Our kids are not that far behind the kids over there, but it's, it's that age when we get to, I think George was saying, you know, that's 16, 17, 18, then, then they seem to, you know, then they, they seem to get better over there because they have better leagues, they have better competitions, they have the best playing against the best. Here we get lost, you know, a little bit and there's, you know, less um, for, for our players. There's just, you know, not, a, not as many opportunities um, for, our, for our young players. And it's, 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 you know, it's tough at that age. There's no short answer to it either. It's uh, <laughs> the question of resilience from the, from the individual, a bit of luck things fall into place they find good coaches and mentors that give them an opportunity and and then from that it's up to them really to take it yep yep yeah no, totally totally agree it's uh it's it's not a, it's not it's not it's not easy um it takes a lot of hard work you know we'll always say it hard work you know having good work ethic you know being respectful you know I'll, you know i'll reiterate you know i come back to those points all the time um, that that that's what coaches look for. That's what what coaches are looking for. And uh, if 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 you can deliver, um, you know, it's not it's not easy. It's, it's not easy. I mean, like I said to you right from again from from the start. Every time you you go up in a level, now we're talking even saying under twelves to under thirteens to under fourteens to under fifteens. Every time you jump, there's always you'll see there's always that next level. You know the physicality or the speed of the game or the technical ability of the players just get a little bit better. So if you can imagine that, still keep going up and up and up and up to to the next level, it jumps again. You know another what whatever it is, ten or twenty percent. So you've got to readjust. You know you've got to be well. You've got to adjust to that to that. And if you can't, you sort of okay. You you just reach your level and that's fine. Um, it's being able to go to the next level. And, and uh, you know, again, probably sometimes when you go to the next level, it's mental toughness as well. Can you stick in there? Can you, can you cope with the intensity? Can you cope with the pressure? Can you cope with the coach, you know, um, getting at you, you know? Um, so, you know, it's not easy. Yeah. It's and not it's easy. And we, we, think, we, we think it's, you know, we, we see all these, you know, we see players coming through, but, you know, probably not enough. Um, but you'll see the players that come through are the ones that, yeah, have been able to handle it and, and be able to get to that level because of just, you know, their own personal motivation and, and you know, they're just willing to stick in there and, and, and grind it out um, to be the best they can. That's, uh, that's, that's basically what I, you know, all I can say. It's a, it's a reflection of society in the workplace, you know, in, in university. If you can stick through it, grind through it, take the hits, keep moving forward and keep uh, adding to your toolkit or adding to your skill set, you're going to become an employable person or you're going to become a, a successful graduate. And football is, is just a, another avenue for kids to express themselves uh, and follow that same process and hopefully take it into life. Yep, that's right. And the thing is also with... You know, with our with our sport as well, there's different pathways you can take as well. You don't have to, you know, you can branch out to different different pathways in in in, in soccer or in football. You don't have to reach um, the A League, or you don't have to reach a national team. You don't have to play overseas. I mean, you can you can branch out and play. You know, you can you can still earn a living from the game um, by playing at a good good level, senior MPL or now I know with um, with schools and you know I've I've been to America as well you know with um, scholarships you know that's a, that's another good um, pathway for young players if they really you know um, want to go down that path there's nothing wrong with that um, so you know there's there's obviously different levels where you can reach um, and players reach reach a certain level and uh, you know the ones that the ones that want to kick on. Um, that they, they 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 go on the others they they just reach a certain level and and that's there's nothing wrong with that you know there's nothing wrong because at the end of the day you know we want we want people playing sport playing at a, you know playing community football playing 
you know, we, we have the, the highest participation sport in, 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 the, con- in, in, in the country. So um, it's, you know, that, that's fantastic. Yeah. Well said. Um, Georgie, do you want to finish us off? Yeah, yeah, just one question that's always intrigued me, Vaughan, and I'll tell you where it leads to. You obviously, you were born in New Zealand, you came across to Australia at, at a young age, I guess. How old were you when you came to Australia? Uh, 20. Oh, I say you're a bit older. Okay. I was just, yeah. just going to ask, because I'm, I'm just, I want to tie it back to our kids, you know, when they go off to trials or whatever. How did, how did you adjust, A, hey, coming into a new country, coming into a different environment? Obviously, the football environment over there would have been a little bit different to coming into a football environment here in Australia. And where I'm, where I'm leading this question to is, you hit, you know, we talk about a lot of kids saying, oh, I've been given an opportunity to trial here or to do that. And sometimes you can tell, we even talking to them that they're overwhelmed before they even, they, they even come, they've even been invited and gone into that process. So yeah. what sort of, um, what sort of um, guidance or information could you tell those sort of kids that do get those opportunities? Because, Sometimes they, they're just overwhelmed by everything and they come back and they go, oh, sir, or cat or lunch, or no, I didn't do well. Or, you know, I was, you know, I just, I was nervous. I was, you know, I don't think the coach liked me. I, you know, I, I made too many errors, even though tech, or technically I know I'm better than that with my passing or my decision-making or, you know, mm. whatever. Yeah, well, no, it's a good point because we see, we see trialers coming all the time um, and they, you see them, um, they're always very anxious, you know, they're very, yeah, very nervous because it's the first time or the second time, you know, but we always, you know, allow them to have two or three sessions with us and to try to get them to mix in. It's not easy with, with the initial group, but then like, I, like I will say to you, every time they come in, you know, they'll come back and the feedback is, oh, the, the, the speed and the intensity is, is, is a lot higher than what I'm used to. You know, I'm not used to that, you know, but then what we tend to find is, if we keep that that player or you know the 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 player with us for for two or three sessions or even a couple of weeks, they they tend to get they tend to get up to speed with it. You know, um, you know, um, at, at initially, yes, he, he, the, the, you know, they're going to make make errors or make mistakes or, or or whatever. But the thing is, if you can keep you know someone, you'll see that if you can keep someone in that environment at that level. Um, they they will they'll get to that level they'll they'll grasp it and and because they're getting challenged um you know it's like anything you know you go into something and you, you don't want to be left behind you know you want to keep you want to keep up pace with that with what, what's going on in, in the session so you know you you push yourself to um yeah so all i would say really to those players that you know are going for trials or, or even going you know to a new club or whatever you know first is you know, be yourself, um, you know, be yourself, go in there, you know, and, and just give your very best. That That's all you can do. You, you can only give your best. Um, and you don't need to, sometimes I think also, so, you know, players try to, even I say it to my own players, you know, we try to, we overcomplicate it sometimes, you know, we try to try to do too much. We try to take too many touches you know, and, and try to try to overdo it and try to impress me. You, but, but the thing is, you're not impressing me by doing that, you know, like it's a team sport. So everybody has a different role and a different responsibility within the team. Um, you know, you know, whether it's in the back third, middle third, and the front third, the, the, those type of players have certain characteristics about them. Now, if you're trying to do certain things, running with the ball in the back third because you want to take on a player and beat him, well, it's probably not the right thing that, you know, what we're looking for, you know, it's probably not the right thing. So keep the game simple, um, you know, uh, you know, ask the coach, you know, you know, where, where I'm playing, what, what, what sort of things, you know, are you looking for in this particular position? What, what do you, what, what sort of, you know, this football club, it, clubs maybe have different, different ways of looking at, you know, what, what are you looking for me as a winger? Would you like me to take on players or, um so you know always you know be be um you know give good because I, I even as a coach sometimes i find that as a youth development coach uh players don't uh i will give them the information or i'll i'll, I'll plan the session and i'll run it but um you know 
and then you, you say to them, oh, yeah, do you get it? Do you understand? And they all go, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, whereas, no, I feel like sometimes I need to be challenged as well. Ask me a question, you know, tell me why, why are we doing that? Why, why is that player there and, and not here? Or why is he supporting underneath and not here? You know, so, you know, that's, again, that's an, a good sign of, you know, a, a player who's, you know, is, is thinking about the game. He's always, you know, you see in a, in a group when you're coaching a group and you ask the question, there's normally it's the same person or the same two or three players that always go who have the right answers, you know. And in the end, I say, okay, stop. Let someone else answer. I'm, ask, I'm asking him, what, 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 why are you doing, what are you doing there? Why, where should you be? You know, where, where could you take up a better position there or whatever, you know? So, um, yeah, like I said, I, I mean, I'm getting a, a bit away from your, from your question, but, um, uh, yeah, like I said, if people trialing, you know, go into new clubs, just be yourself, you know, go and enjoy it. Thank, thank people for, for the opportunity. Love to have the opportunity again, really enjoyed it. Um, but yeah, yeah, and and then sometimes you know it's that, that's why I'm saying the players get um, get nervous or they get in you know, a lot of anxiety about going there and 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 trying to perform and 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 thinking oh I have to be at my best today or otherwise he's going to cut me or whatever you know um, some yeah sometimes you only have an opportunity for you know once or twice so sometimes you you know it's you got to grab it. And I think Joe touched on it as well. Sometimes you got to have a bit of luck as well, you know, um, and we're all different as coaches, you know, cause we'll, we'll pick a different 11 or whatever. Um, and sometimes the coach, you know, sometimes I feel sometimes the coach will make the player, you know, the coach, if you have the right coach or, um, you know, you might just take a liking to a pl certain player because I don't know, it's just something in his DNA that you like. You really like him. And then there'll be other players, you know, you might not like his behaviours. Uh, yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't really do it. For, he doesn't work hard enough or he doesn't have these certain, you know, or, you know, and the thing is, then what I would say is if, if you aren't, if you are successful, that's fantastic. If you, 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 you make it to the next level, but if you aren't always ask for feedback, you know, just say, okay, thank you, sir, for the, for the opportunity. But, um, you know, and I'm, I'm going to go back to my club. But, um, you know, what, what sort of feedback can you give me? You know, what, what do I need to, to go to that next level? What do I need to work on, um, you know, to, to, to really, you know, nail a spot or, or, or those certain things? So, um, yeah, that, yeah. And, and the thing is also when, when you go in a trial, don't, don't be too, you know, if, if things don't work out, don't be too disappointed that, okay, I didn't, I didn't make it there, but it doesn't mean it's not the end of the world that it's not the, you know, it's not the be all and end, or you, you've been to a trial, you've had an opportunity, but you know, something else might come up down the track. So, you know, players think, oh, you know, I didn't, I didn't make, oh, I didn't do well in the trial and the coach didn't like me. And, you know, we, we tend to always, and, and I'll touch on this again. Um, we always, you know, as players, uh, we always want to make excuses all the time about, you know, the, oh, he didn't pass me the ball or, or um, you know, the coach wasn't good enough, the clubs, you know, I don't like the club or, you know, uh, the grass was not, you know, the ground's not good enough or, you know, we all tend to make excuses all the time. Whereas, you know, um, look, look forward, look forward. And, and, and be positive and, and try to, um, you know, try, try to, to, to excel in, in certain areas, um, you know, where take, take the feedback with you and go and, and go. And like I said, sometimes, you know, we'll, we'll release a player and I'll be the first one to look at him in the eye and I'll say, mate, you know, unfortunately we're going to have to let you go. Um, but look, but what I would say to players is, Go away and prove me wrong. Go away and work at your game. We've given you some feedback. Go and work at it. You know, in 12 months' time, we'll keep watching you. Come back. And then if you've improved in those areas, then I'll be the, you know, I'll be the first one to congratulate you. Or if you make it at another club or at, a, you know, at a higher level, I'll be 
the first one to come over to you and say, well done, mate, you've just, you've, you've nailed it. You've, you've gone away. You've t- taken on board the information. You've really worked at your game. And now look at you now. You, you're playing, you're, you're earning a living out of the game. That's fantastic. So, yeah, like I said, those, those the trials, yes, it, it, it can be cutthroat at time. But what, what I would say is it's not, it's not the be all and end all. It's, it's not, you can move on from that. As long as you take the positives out of it, don't come back and sulk and, and say, oh, he let me go. You know, I wasn't good enough. You know, um, you know, take, take, take the feedback, take the, take the constructive criticism on board and go away, have a think about it, have a look at your game, keep working, work hard. There'll be another opportunity that will come. Grab it, take it, go for it. Great advice. Yeah, great advice. Yeah. and a great way to um to end a brilliant conversation with a lot of insight as well. Um, no, thank you, thank you for all of your obviously your your insight, but from so many perspectives, which is awesome as well. Um, a lot of the time we speak to former players, but you know former players that become youth coaches that are in the senior environment and know that the transition from thing to thing, they're a rare one for us to speak to, and and it really does help give perspective to young kids that are going to go through that process as they get older of going on trials and trying to impress. But some of those core, core things that you mentioned about humility, asking for feedback, punctuality, uh, wearing the correct gear, those little things obviously make a big difference to the coaches that are looking for that, which is usually the ones that are at the higher end of the game anyway. So yep. thank you again, mate. Really appreciate your time and wishing you all the, lot, the rest of lockdown and, and the next part of um, your, your career at Western United and Essendon Royals. Yep. Thanks, Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. Really appreciate it. Thanks for your time, Vaughn. My pleasure.